it has been a very crazy busy summer. I feel like I have in large part just entirely missed my garden this year, like it happened without me. So I'm going to take a few minutes this morning to sip on some tea and look at my beautiful, entirely overgrown with weeds garden and soak it in a little bit before it is gone for the winter in a short few months. I'm really excited about all the orb weaver spiders in my garden this year. Last year I had two orb weavers and each of them laid egg sacs and I was super excited and have been watching them this year to see if or when they would hatch. This year I have found four orb weavers so far. One is on my back porch, one is in the corn stalks. It surprised me, I was not expecting it there. One was in the elderberry and one is in my fennel but they are really fun to watch they make cool patterns and they eat lots of bugs it's august it's hot the weeds in the garden are going nuts the harvest is wonderful i can't even keep up with it we are going to get some of these elderberries off of here and get those put in the fridge for when I can get to them and hopefully harvest some more things tonight. And I'm hoping I can start working on getting the garden ready for fall planting. I've got a bunch of stuff under the grow light inside that will be ready to come out in just a few weeks. So I want to try to work on some of these weeds and get some compost put down and get that area ready for all of our fall things going in soon all these elderberries on here. I've already taken off uh, two bucketfuls of elderberries. I've got a ton in the fridge right now. I just haven't had time to get anything made with them. I did dehydrate some and then I put them in the freezer for teas because uh, last year some moths got into my dehydrated berries and um, laid eggs, I think. And then uh, the moth eggs hatched inside the jar and then when I pulled the jar out to make tea, there was moths in the jar. So I dehydrated them and then put them in the freezer this year so that if there happened to be any eggs laid in them, they would not survive. Do you know how you know that the birds are enjoying your elderberries? That's how you know. One of my tricks sometimes to get ones that are really high up that I can't reach is to grab a branch and pull it closer so I can reach it. I'll also bring the step stool out here and use that so I don't accidentally drop them as I'm trying to hold onto the branch. But some of them are really high up there and I won't be able to reach them unless I have a step ladder. Because they're way up there. <laughs>
I've got four heaping baskets like this, and that's just the stuff I can reach from the ground, not the stuff that I can reach with the step stool yet. Back out with the step stool and get some more in a little bit, but you might be wondering why I didn't grab some of the ones that look like this. And they have like that web in them. If I was really hurting for berries and I really needed them, I would try to clean them off and keep them, but I'm not hurting for berries, so I don't wanna deal with cleaning spider webs off my berries. Um, I've got plenty that if I don't get that one, it's fine. There is still tons more up there that I can try to reach with the step stool in a little bit, but I'm gonna take this inside and cool down for a minute before I come back out and get some more. that's all I'm gonna be able to reach for right now. The rest of it is gonna be bird food, which is fine, I've got plenty. I like to be able to get every single last bit, but I can't reach it. And I'm not gonna fall off the steps while trying to reach it. So let's take this stuff inside and we'll get it ready for our next step. It's summer in a basket. I'll miss these flavors when they're gone, but that will make me appreciate them even more when it's summer again. The garden is just so completely unruly at this point. The cantaloupes are crawling up the tomato vines, the cucumbers are crawling up, the tomato vines are mixing in with each other. It is the time of year where everything is just kind of taking over and doing very, very well. We could still potentially have two more months of the garden before we have a frost, even maybe two and a half. So we still have a lot of time to get um, more out of the garden before it's gone for the winter, potentially. Of these little teeny tiny little cherry tomatoes. I think they're adorable and I love them in my salads. The cherry tomatoes have definitely been the star of the garden this year, by far. They have done superbly well. Holy basil did really well too. Look, this, this whole thing is one holy basil plant. Wow, the holy basil did amazing. I feel like I could have used it probably a lot more than I did. What I'm gonna try to do is chop a bunch of it and dry it. And I'm gonna see if I can use it for cooking like in, as a replacement for Genovese basil since my Genovese basil did not grow this year. But the holy basil has done amazing too. All right, so now that we have all of our elderberry brought inside where it's nice and cool, um, I start stripping off the elderberries and putting them into jars. That way, if I need to stop while I'm in the middle, I can just plunk this jar right in the fridge and come back to it later. It's a tedious task. It's one of those ones that uh, is really good if you can like put on a movie and do it while you're sitting um, or listen to a podcast or an audio book and then it passes the time while you're doing some of these more tedious tasks, but I actually really enjoy some of the tedious tasks. So I'm gonna see how many berries we have here. Looks like three pounds, 1.3 ounces in this bowl. I teared the scale 
when I put this bowl on before I started putting the berries in. Some of these berries are gonna be made into elderberry syrup and some of them are gonna be made into juice. This is my first time ever making elderberry syrup or juice. So for the elderberry syrup portion, I am following the recipe from the Homesteading Family. I also have a recipe from Wellness Mama, but I am going to do the one with the video for this time to help me figure out what I'm doing a little bit. I put some cinnamon and some ginger. I didn't have whole cloves, so I put some powdered cloves in there. To make the elderberry juice portion, I put the rest of my berries into this pot. I would used four cups for the elderberry syrup to make a double batch of elderberry syrup and then the rest of my berries went in here. Um, and I'm going to put one cup of filtered water in here and put this on pressure cook for five minutes. This one is really an experiment. We'll see how this goes. I ended up changing my mind and putting in five cups of water. Uh, I just felt like maybe that would be better than just one cup. So we'll see how this goes. I've had to upgrade my compost bucket to a bigger one as I've been doing more harvesting from the garden. Now I did hear that you can use the pulp from making your elderberry juice and your elderberry syrup to make jellies, like mixing it with figs. Um, I'm not gonna try that this year, maybe next year, but for this year, uh, it's just gonna go to the chickens and the compost. Carolyn over at Homesteading Family does an amazing video tutorial with her recipe, so I'm gonna link that down below. I am not going to show you how to do her recipe. I'm just telling you that I'm doing it. But it's ironic that I decided to have this on the to-do list for today because I woke up with that familiar feeling of a cold. So I started all of my herbal remedies and we're gonna add in elderberry syrup and we'll see how that helps hopefully shorten the cold. Oh my gosh, my kitchen is such a disaster right now. This time of year, it's like something has to fall. A lot of things have to fall to be able to keep up with the harvest and the preserving. There's so much dishes right now, it's insane. I have these three jars of elderberries left. I had been keeping them in the fridge. They already kind of started to dry out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is put these in my dehydrator to finish drying and then they will be for making teas. Got another one pound, 6.2 ounces. The weighing isn't necessary. I am just keeping track of what I get this year so I can look for my own purposes and see how our garden is doing. Elderberries laid out on trays and these are going into my dehydrator. This dehydrator comes with one, they call it a jelly tray, I think. You can use it to make like fruit roll-ups or jerky. Uh, so if you need additional, in there without making it fall over. There we go. If you need additional um, trays that do not have slats that stuff can fall through, you can use parchment paper. That works. And then for my last one, I am just going to put this plate in here. Because again, I'm not using the heat function, I'm just using the air function for this to keep them safe while they are drying so nothing gets to them. And what I'll do is every maybe six to eight hours or so, I'm gonna come um, like rotate them, move them around so that they're drying evenly so there's not stuff that's in the middle that's wet because uh, we do not want anything to mold while it's drying. We want it to dry. <laughs> I've got my honey and my lemon in here now. And you can see I should have probably picked a bigger pot. But what I'm going to do is I want to put one jar of this in the fridge to use now. And then I'm going to can the rest of it. So um, I will take one jar of this out and then heat this back up so that I can get it canned so it'll be in the pantry and not taking up all the space in my fridge. All right we've got our jars in there getting ready to can our elderberry syrup. I made nine half pints. Let's see how our juice did in here. I maybe should have put more water in it. I don't know. I've never made juice before 
and I was having a hard time finding a recipe for it. So it might be like a thick juice, but my intention with this is I'm trying to recreate, where is it? Uh, I have the jar somewhere. Oh, there it is. I got a uh, salad dressing from Thrive Market made with elderberry syrup. And so I saved it because it was delicious and I was hoping I could just kind of look at the ingredients and try to remake it so it had elderberry juice concentrate. So I thought if I can make elderberry juice, then I can recreate that recipe and make my own elderberry vinaigrette because I think that bottle, this little eight ounce bottle, I think it was like $8, which is crazy, right? That's crazy town. So if I can make it with my own elderberries, I can use um, whatever oil I choose and then those spices that are in there. And then um, a little bit of some type of vinegar, whichever kind of vinegar I wanna use. If I can make this myself, that will save me a ton of money instead of buying that one. Until right off the bat, it does smell much more potent than the other one. I also didn't put any spices or anything into that juice. It is just elderberries and water. So it doesn't have like that cinnamon and cloves smell that was so good. So I'm gonna get the berries drained out of that and then we're going to can the juice as well. Isn't that so pretty? I need to get a fine mesh strainer, like a super fine mesh strainer. It's on my wish list. But. I have been doing fine so far without it. I'm gonna squish some of this juice out of here. The hardest part about canning stuff is, since everything is so timed, um, with toddlers, like, they could just all of a sudden need you, like, right in the middle, and you, like, cannot stop, like, what you're doing. You have to just, it's, that's the most stressful part of it, and even if you try to time it, like, during naps, it can be unpredictable. They could wake up during a nap. They could not take their nap. <laughs> There's a lot of variables with toddlers when you're trying to can that can be very, very stressful. So if you are able to, like if you have a friend that wants to can, one of the best things you can do is tag team. Have your friend come over to your house, do all of your canning, then go over to your friend's house, do all of their canning. Then there's another adult that can, you know, step away and deal with the kids if they need to. Um, it's, it's so so helpful and then also the kids have somebody to play with if they have um, kids that come over with you and stuff too so it works out really really well if you can to can the elderberry juice I added half a tablespoon of lemon juice to each half pint jar then added the hot elderberry juice and processed for 10 minutes in a water bath canner It feels so good to have all of these cans of elderberry juice and elderberry syrup in the cupboard. Oh, that's so good. I'm so excited about this. Ugh. I will work on perfecting this salad dressing recipe and then once I feel like it is perfected, I will share it with you. These elderberries have been in my dehydrator for one week and they are finally dry. I did not use any heat setting on these, only the air setting. So they would probably dry faster if you used uh, the heat, but I just wanted to use the air. 
So now our last step for these elderberries is I'm going to put them in a jar and put them in my freezer. And then these will be used for making fresh teas. So what I will do when I'm ready to make tea is I will spoon out however much I want for whatever pitcher I'm making. So a lot of times I just throw a little sprinkle in if I'm doing just a cup of tea and um, like in a tea diffuser that you put inside the hot water. Um, if I'm doing a whole pitcher, I would probably use, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon with a mixture. So like if I'm doing um, a tea for colds, I'll use elderberry, bee balm, which I have some dried over here. Um, I'll use lemon verbena and I'll throw in some of my um, echinacea flowers, which I need to get more echinacea flowers for the winter time. I have only a little bit of those so far. So I'll make that mix. So instead of storing it, like mixing it together and storing it, I um, will store it, or I'll mix it right before I make my teas. As you can see, this time of year is very busy, but there is so many goodies coming into the kitchen and I'm so thankful for all of the harvest that we have. I can already see there's more elderberries ready to get harvested and brought inside. So I've got a lot more work to do. Thanks for being here. I'd love to know if you guys have elderberries where you are that you can harvest. They grow wild around here and you can actually just go get them if you know they aren't being sprayed. But this one I got and it has made tons more shoots for me to give out and share with friends. So if you're local and you need one, let me know and I will be glad to share with you an elderberry. And I will see you next time. Bye.